Alright, hello and welcome to the Masana YouTube channel where we talk about all things hydronics. Today we're going to be comparing radiant floors to our radiant ceiling. Typically when we introduce people to our radiant ceiling panels, the first thing they bring up is how does it compare to a radiant floor and why did you move that technology to the ceiling? What was the reason for that? And so we'll get into all that today, but first I'm going to take you back all the way to 1992 when we first set out to provide radiant cooling. At the time, radiant heating was already popular, it had already been a thing, uh, but radiant cooling was a little uh, lesser known, and it was always a battle between the dew point temperature and the radiant surface temperature, and we're still experiencing that battle today. Um, and so how it works is if you create a radiant surface, let's take this glass for example, so you fill it with cold water, the outside of the glass will get really cold, but if it gets too cold, if it falls below the dew point temperature, then we'll have condensation forming on the glass. Um, and when you're trying to do something like this for cooling, you can't have condensation forming. So if we're making your ceiling really cold, we can't produce condensation on your ceiling. So we have to use intelligent sensors and controls to monitor that dew point when condensation would form and then adjust the supply of water temperature to adjust the radiant surface temperature so we avoid condensation. And so this is all much easier with a low mass system because they're fast responding. So in 1992, when we researched radiant cooling in the floor, we found that radiant floors are too high a mass. Uh, you can't change their temperature quickly. So if there's a sudden change in humidity, which then changes the dew point temperature, you're not gonna be able to change the temperature of the floor fast enough to avoid condensation. And that's the whole goal, avoid condensation. So we move the technology to the ceiling where you can be really aggressive with the dew point. So as the dew point changes, we can quickly change the temperature of the radiant ceiling to make sure it always stays above the dew point. But if we were to do so with a radiant floor, there'd be a change and the floor would be slow to respond. And so you're producing condensation as soon as that radiant surface falls below the dew point temperature. And you know, nowadays we are seeing low mass floor options available. So Masonic controls can manage radiant floor cooling, although you're limited in output because you have to stay a further distance away from the dew point to maintain, you know, this safety zone where if there's a sudden change in humidity, you have enough time to react with your floor to avoid condensation. And so the reason we moved this radiant technology to the ceiling was to achieve a low thermal mass to optimize radiant cooling output. Now there are some other benefits you get. The first you'll typically see is on the job site because these panels are much easier to install than a typical radiant floor system. Radiant floor systems can be, you know, pour in concrete slabs which have piping running through rebar and then you pour in concrete over that to make a nice radiant slab. There's also track systems so you're running piping throughout a track and then panel systems where you're running piping throughout a panel. Um, and all these are good systems, but when you compare them to a radiant ceiling on the job site, they create more of a hassle where other trades might have to avoid working in a certain area because the floor is, you know, it's a big concrete slab right now, or there's piping all laid out that you have to be careful with. A radiant ceiling, you're putting the radiant surface in the ceiling is out of the way, and you could typically do so much faster than you can with a radiant floor. Uh, and so you actually might save money by streamlining your job site through the use of a radiant ceiling. Now, other benefits you get are, of course, in terms of output and response time. With the radiant ceiling, because it's in the ceiling, it's not coming in direct contact with occupants, so you can use more extreme temperatures and heating. And then cooling, we're using extreme temperatures and staying just above the dew point to provide as much cooling as we can without producing condensation. Um, and so you can be really aggressive with the ceiling uh, where you can't with the floor, so you get a better response time, better output, um, and then also you're creating an unobstructed radiant surface. So a radiant ceiling will be, you know, coming into contact with your drywall. So that drywall will become the radiant surface as well. And so creating this nice, even hot surface on the ceiling that's not obstructed by carpet or furniture that you would have obstructing a radiant floor system. Um, and so radiant ceiling, all that thermal energy is really being radiated downward into the environment below. Um, and that's in heating. In heating, you're radiating thermal energy, but in cooling, that chilled ceiling is actually absorbing thermal energy and taking it out of the room. Um, and then we continue to cycle chilled water to continue to provide cooling. But yeah, in heating, you're radiating thermal energy. In cooling, you're absorbing thermal energy. But either way, we're just trying to make the environment much more comfortable for occupants. And it's easier to do so in the ceiling. Another benefit that you're gonna get with a radiant ceiling is although you can use extreme water temperatures, you don't need to. So since they are low mass system, it doesn't take much energy to heat them up or cool them down. When you look at a high mass radiant floor where you have to supply 130 degree water to get the, the radiant slab up to temperature, a radiant ceiling might only need 100 degree water. And so because of this difference in what you're supplying, the energy source doesn't have to work as hard. Um, and so it's all about maximizing efficiency, maximizing comfort, um, and also preserving the aesthetic of your environment, which is why we're big fans of radiant technology that are, you know, behind the walls or underneath the floors. So you don't see it. You're not seeing these grills on the wall or feeling any hot spots or cold spots due to forced air systems blowing air. Um, and so there's a variety of things you could do to make the ideal system 
Um, but here at Masana, we're experts in it all. We can make it all happen. We can run all these systems in tandem. Like I said, radiant floor with ceiling or even radiant floor, ceiling and hydronic fan cools if you're okay with some air movement. Um, and so you could really do it all. If you are interested in a Masana system, you could actually head over to masana.tech, our website, and we have a get started page where you can fill out various estimates um, and it'll actually spit out a quote via email or put you in contact with some of our engineers. You can even upload your plans so our engineers can be in touch and kind of go over your project with you. But yeah, we have hydronic experts always ready to talk hydronic. So you can go ahead and give us a call. I'll link the number in our website and our contact down below and even a link to that estimate form. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening today. I hope you learned something. Take care.